So I want to talk about Alia sometimes has her feelings in Russian. Obviously from the title and the thumbnail of the video, you know what anime or light novel I'm talking about. But the thing that I really want to get into, and this could be a hell of a long ramble, and it could turn into multiple parts if people are very interested in this, but I feel like I've talked a lot about Alia sometimes has her feelings in Russian on the channel, and I kind of feel bad because I don't want to just talk about it non-stop and the channel almost turn into just talking about that for this foreseeable time until I start talking about other stuff because of course I'm reading the light novels and reviewing them so definitely check those out if you want more analysis slash reviews on the light novels and me going into what I like and dislike about the light novels. But generally speaking, I've liked the series. And the reason being is simple. And I'll get into that as I'm going through some of the critical points because I have counters to that. But I've been seeing a lot of criticism for Alia sometimes has her feelings in Russian. And then I've also just seen some blind hatred. So be very clear here, I do know the difference between criticism and just blind hatred. And so I want to make that a distinction because I know some people that watch these videos will sit there and go, oh, he's saying that I'm blind hating the show. Most likely no. I'm most likely not, but you're probably taking that to offense because, again, criticism upon criticism sometimes can upset people. And I get that. Some people have, you know, don't like being criticized. So the thing is, is that I've seen some criticisms of people saying, well, they where's the backstory for the main male protagonist? Where's the backstory for you, uh, for Yuki or Alia or all these other characters? And the thing is, is that when you have a story like this, and especially based on a light novel, you can't do everything in one go. And there's a saying that's been around for a while. Rome wasn't built in a day. And in a series like this, you can't just have everything thrown at you all at once. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of anime, light novel, and manga fans want, is that they want everything thrown at them all in one episode, or at least a couple of episodes. Like, they need the backstory for the two main love interests they need massive amount of character development to happen like oh they need to like hate each other and then love each other in the next episode and all these major revelations but also i feel like a lot of people don't understand that good supporting characters actually make a good story and a lot of people just want stories to be only hyper focused on two specific characters and then feel weird when suddenly other characters are actually well written and this isn't exactly something new. It's not like this author's breaking the rules of storytelling by actually having strong supporting characters. I think it's just a lot of anime and light novel fans, especially anime fans, are so used to characters being the hyper-focus, like the main male and female character being the main love interest and only being the focus of the story. And so when you have a story like this where other characters are actually shining and being... And I'm not just talking about Yuki either. I'm talking about Alia's sister, the maid. Those are a couple of good characters. And then you've also got some of the new characters being introduced in the later episodes that will continue to be built on. And there are more characters yet to be introduced that are going to continue to stand out. And so when people see this, they freak out and they're going, oh my God, there's there's too many characters for me to understand because they're all so well written and, and got their own motives and backstory and etc. But this is another thing is they expect everything to be dumped in one go or you know if, if, if I don't know the entire backstory of all characters and everything about them and all their motives all within one volume I'm gonna lose interest and it's like this is the problem anime fans have gotten short attention span issues over the last I think couple of years especially in the last four years this TikTok mindset, and I like to use that as a kind of a reference, but YouTube Shorts is also an issue as well. You had Instagram, I think, contributed to that. You also had another app as well that got taken down, and I forget what it's called, but it was very much like TikTok and all that kind of stuff, where you have these short form video content, and I think people have gotten very short attention spans, and they just want everything thrown in their face in a very short span. And I think that is one of the reasons why Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian has been heavily criticized more so recently than the early stages because another thing as well is trend chasing that's a whole different topic that I could get into is where people see a couple of clips of a, of a show or a couple of memes and they build their entire opinion on that 
and then we'll go into the show based on those expectations and then realize, oh, the story isn't quite what it looks like on those memes and clips because, yeah, they've been edited, they've been sliced up, they've got music added to it, they've been presented in a way that makes the video or the clip do well because content, 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 impressions farming, impressions farming, and Twitter slash X has become super bad for that, where people will just kind of present things in a misleading fashion to get impressions. And it also comes down to trend chasing, because one of the things I've noticed with this series is some of the hate is coming from other fans of other romance series that are going, oh, well, why is this series doing well? <laughs> this is just overhyped. It's trash. Why isn't my favorite series being the center of attention? How dare you not like only my series? And this is something that's been happening with isekais. Great example. Mushoku Tensei and ReZero community. For some dumb reason, apparently some people in the ReZero, and again, some people in the ReZero community believe that you can only like one anime or one isekai, and if you dare like another anime, light novel or manga, outside of that one, you're somehow committing hate crimes. Example of that is Slime and Spider community. When Slime and Spider, uh, Spider and Slime Season 2 came out, people were hating on each other even though the authors were best friends and they did collaborative work together and they were calling each other copycats. It's like, why can't you like both? This isn't exactly a new issue, but it seems to be spreading more and more and more where we're getting these weird, stupid, tribalistic mindsets of if you like X anime, you can't like Y anime as well. And it's like, okay, that's just stupid grow up, go away, you're not part of any community that makes, that wants to have any meaningful discussion. And if that's your mindset of, you can't like this anime because you like that anime, don't want you here. Goodbye. Unsub. Adios, senorito. Don't need you. You contribute nothing of value in any conversation if that's how you're going to behave. So that's some of the basics to go over. You've got things, like I said, backstory. I've seen a lot of people talking about the main male protagonist, Masa, and going over his backstory and people going, well, why isn't his backstory explained yet? And I'm like, this is a slow burning story. This isn't something that you're gonna learn everything about in one volume. And I'm up to volume five right now of the light novel. So there's volumes one, two, three, four, and 4.5. I know some people go, oh, well, this is four. but there is a 4.5, which adds an extra layer of extra backstory to some of these characters. And as the volumes go on, you learn more about it. And I actually like that approach because one thing people complain about is info dumping, where everything just gets thrown on you all at once and it's, oh, it's so overwhelming. And yeah, I do think that can be a problem with many series. But one thing I like about this is that they kind of trickle it. They build the foundations of the backstory. They give you an understanding of why certain people behave in the way they are. And you've also got to understand, he isn't the only person a part of his backstory. You've got a maid and a sister as well that are major characters in the story that are going to contribute to his backstory. So as time goes on, you're going to learn about him and Yuki and the maid. So of course, it's going to take a little bit of time for them to go over the backstory. And the whole premise of the story, in my opinion, is his backstory. Him overcoming his backstory is going to be one of the most pivotal components, which I will talk about in volume five, is going to be one of the most pivotal moments of him being able to move on and actually find love. His backstory is that roadblock. That is his final boss as far as him being able to find love, whether he chooses or not. Well, my opinion is earlier, but we'll, we'll get into that in volume five. But that's the thing. You don't want everything explained in one go because if everything's explained in one go, it spoils a lot of the potential surprises later on and the potentials of kind of like trickle feeding you. Like again, this is where I do think stories are badly written, where they need to info dump everything all at once on you because you've got a short attention span. You're like, oh, but I need to know the entire backstory of this character right this moment to be able to come attached to it. No, 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 you don't. You really don't. And I've seen other people actually compare this to uh, Comey Can't Communicate in the sense of people saying that 
it's one of those where it's like, you know, Rikomi can't communicate. There's a lot of backstory. There's a lot of character building. It's a slow burner in her overcoming her issues. But suddenly people have a problem with this anime or light novel because it's slow burning. And it's like, yeah, well, why is that the case? Why is that one allowed and the other one isn't? Even though I've seen a lot of criticism, Rikomi can't communicate as far as it being too drawn out, which could go into a different video. But I do also think it comes down to what I call trend chasing, where a story builds up a lot of hype at the start, everyone jumps on it, everyone screams it's the best thing since sliced bread, anime of the year, peak, and some of us joke about it and some people not so much, and then as soon as there's blood in the water, the piranhas come out and they start nibbling away at the series and it becomes a trend to hate it. And especially on social media apps like X slash Twitter where it's become super big to just dunk on animes and light novels and mangas i do think that is an issue and i've seen some people try to push back on me on that and say oh no that's not the case but <laughs> most people agree that has become a trend hating on stuff is super popular now because it's kind of one of those things where a bunch of kids are going through their angsty teen phases and their big accounts and they're just like oh, me hating on everything is so cool and i get impressions now, I'm not saying every big account does that, so again, don't take offense if you're a big account watching my video going, oh, he's calling me out. Probably not, but maybe. Maybe. But the, here's the thing. If you feel like I'm calling you out, then you must be admitting that you are doing these things. If you're not doing these things, then I'm not calling you out. If you think I'm calling you out, then you're self emitting to these things. So I just want to put that there before you start getting on social media and start screenshotting and going, oh, well, actually. So again, I may not, and I probably aren't calling you out, but if you think it is, maybe there's a reason. I understand some of the criticisms as far as the story goes in feeling like Yuki stands out too much. I get that to a point, but at the same time, Alia is a sundere. I'm not the biggest fan of Sundarays, to be very clear, so I of all people, <laughs> I do see the criticism for Alia as far as like her playing hot and cold, as far as her interests are. But you've always got to understand her backstory that is explained in the first volume of the story, which I think is episode three, if I remember correctly. My Alzheimer's, my dementia's kicking in. And so you got to see her motivations, her drive, her desire to find a partner that is also driven. And there's some interesting stuff about that and the contradictions when it comes to her interests that are also explained in volume 4.5. And this is what I mean. The story builds upon itself volume by volume by volume by volume. Now, I've seen some people say that certain volumes are worse than other volumes. I've so far been enjoying every single volume. Sure, there are some chapters in some of those volumes that I think are not as interesting, but again, you're never going to have peak, 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 peak volume every back to back to back. There's gonna be some volumes that just don't do as well as the others. That's normal for a writer, but I feel like people expect too much from writers being able to consistently just build things up. And that's another thing about storytelling is that for me, storytelling is like a roller coaster. You're going to go through the highs and you're going to go through the lows. And when you go through a high, you have to come down at some point. You can't just keep going up, 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 up. It's one of the other issues when it comes to villains and storytelling, when it comes to making new stakes. An example of that is like video games like World of Warcraft. And there's a point to this, is that when every expansion came out, you had to create a bigger villain, a bigger issue, a bigger calamity. And so it goes from the scale of like a, a zone-wide issue, a continent-wide issue, a planet-wide issue to a galaxy universe multi-universe issue you see where I'm going from the stakes constantly have to get bigger and bigger and bigger but at some point you have to take things down a notch and go back down so that you can have that high again and that is the point of storytelling storytelling is like a roller coaster you're there for the journey the highs and the lows ups and the downs the goods and the bads but I don't really see these as goods and bads it's just part of the journey, but I feel like people expect constant groundbreaking stuff. And another series that tries to do that, that I actually think kind of felt too forced, is Plunderer. 
Now, some people will know what I'm referring to there, but that was a, a manga series that constantly needed to drop massive groundbreaking revelations every couple of chapters. And after a while, it felt extremely forced to the point where it just felt like it lacked any punch because it was like Game of Thrones. After you've killed enough characters, it feels just repetitious and boring. All in all, I think it comes down to a simple fact that not every story is designed for you. And that's fine. I think really when we take a step back and we say, you know, not every romance needs to be catered to your exact designs, but I also do feel like some people in the anime community do have this motion that if a story isn't designed to exactly their taste and it shouldn't exist and if it isn't designed to their taste then it's the worst thing on the planet and I do think that's more harmful because again everyone is different everyone has their own likes and dislikes and as you can tell I like this series I like what it's trying to do and I think the reason why I like it so much is because he isn't just this picture perfect prince and charming but also you well, Alia isn't also the same and I think that's one problem is that a lot of people expect the main female love interest to be this perfect princess that really has no personality and I've seen this as an actual like quote from other people that were criticizing the series saying well really all she should do is just have cute lines and all this kind of and I'm like wait so and I'm just like summarizing the, their overall comment because that isn't exactly what's said but the summarizing was that they were basically implying that Alia should only exist to just be the main love interest that falls in love with him and throws herself at him and she should just only really be there for the one line of cute lines that people clip and go, oh my god, she's so kawaii, she said that cute line, let's clip it and post it a million times. And it's like, okay, so you just want her to be a one-dimensional boring character? So you're telling me by her being flawed and yeah, she is a sundere, some people do and don't like sundere's, and I, as I said, I'm not the biggest fan of Sundarays, but by her having character defects, that then makes her boring because she should just be a one-dimensional character that's just used for one-liners through clips. It's like, do you see the irony there? And I think that's why some people really like Yuki a lot, because Yuki <laughs> definitely has some one-liners that a lot of people love. But here's another thing. Yuki's backstory is yet to come, and trust me, it's a good one. Alia's back, sister's backstory is yet to come, and it's a doozy. And his backstory is yet to come, and it's a doozy. They all have their own character flaws, they have their own strengths and weaknesses, their own highs and lows, and their own backstories. And I like the fact that the story actually develops more than two characters. Because one of the issues that I have with stories, and a recent anime that I watched that does this, is and i'm having a brain fart but it, it went through this problem of it just only developed two characters and ignored everyone else and that was golden time and why i hate that is because when you see these two characters you see them develop you see them grow but they feel like they have to force so much drama to give more growth and time for them but with this instead of forcing weird creepy cringy artificial drama they give other characters ways of growing and develop that complement each other all in one big pot like this is a cast of characters that isn't just two five six seven eight characters all in one big pot and they're all changing and evolving together and because they're all in one big story they all kind of wibbly wobbly mix together and it adds for some interesting chemistry I like the fact that this story isn't just focusing on one or two characters, but instead focusing on a cast of characters. And of course, the drawback to that is, yeah, Alia isn't going to get all the center stage. Now, of course, because he is the main character, a lot of the focus is going to be on him and his journey. But that just also means that Alia isn't going to be the main focus. But that doesn't mean that she won't get attention to her. It doesn't mean that she won't get some love and some backstory additional and more time for her to shine and grow i've also seen people criticize the fact that oh well she doesn't really look like she deserves to win student president and the council role and all that and i'm like that's the point she's the underdog yuki is the final boss and you know how i know yuki's the final boss because yuki said it 
Yuki is the final boss for her. And for him, his past is his final boss. And once they overcome it, they can then confess, love, marry, humpty dumpty bum 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 in a tree, whatever you want to say, you know, get it down, get it jiggy. Mm-mm-mm. And then, of course, the sister can watch. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Free some. But that's the thing about the story is that there's growth, there's development. It's not going to all happen in one episode or two episodes or one season. It's a multiple season, multiple volume style story. And I think that's the funny thing about it is because I remember when Love is War came out. So many people criticized Love is War and be like, oh, why is this on season three and they're not already together? Gosh, this story is so boring and bad because they're not together after the first season. It's so repetitious. And it's like, it's like, what? You, you want all this to happen all like, like, there's a difference between character depth, character growth, and a journey that isn't drawn out, like <clears throat> Rent a Girlfriend. And then there's just people just whinging about stories that aren't really that drawn out. Like, again, you want the journey to feel meaningful and rid some, like, meat to get your teeth into. And I understand that some people don't like long-winded stories, but you should also realize when you look at how many volumes there are and the fact that it's based on a longer, on a light novel, that it's going to be a bit of meat behind it. If you want short-form romances, there are plenty out there that are very short and sweet and to the point. But I also do feel like sometimes you can't get as attached to the characters because really you're just kind of building the basic blocks and then kind of doing a little bit of back and then that's kind of the end of it. And you're kind of left at the end of it going, damn, I, I kind of wish I had a little bit more. Kind of wish there was a little bit more growth, development, journey to go through. That way I can feel more attached and then when things do come to an end, I feel sad. Feeling sad that a story ends is what I want because then I know that it, the writer did a good job at building something that I truly love and cherish. So I think all in all, when you look at that as a component, I think I understand some of the criticism. I do. Like the Sundare component of it, I can understand that her playing hot and cold can feel a little bit mm, repetition and a little bit annoying, but that is also part of her personality. And I feel like if you don't like that, you need to get off the boat soon or now. Because that is just who she is. And also people just being like, oh, but I like this character more. Dude, that's been happening since Nasika. <laughs> High School DX2. That's more of a joke one. But very similar series like that. Like Rent a Girlfriend. Another one. We Never Learn. But see, one thing I liked about We Never Learn is that that had multiple endings. And they were all canon as well. The writer or the author for the manga said, hey, Every ending is canon, you pick your favourite. I'd like to see that more with light novel series. And I see a lot of people saying, oh, it, it can't work, why? Because it's not done before and it's mainly for visual novels. Why does only visual novels get to do that? Why can't we have light novels and mangas and animes having alternative endings? It can be done, it's just people just don't like new things. And that's the funny thing. People whinge that everything feels the same and formulaic and copy-paste. And then when something new and innovative is done, they then whinge, oh, I don't like change. Well, get rid of the times, Grandpa. Times change. And I think it would be nice to see more authors, not all, but more authors try and go down that path of if you're going to have multiple love interests that you want to make look like have a chance to win, then create alternate endings where they do win. Because at least then you will try and actually make it make sense that they could potentially win. Because when you have a story where you have a character and the girl and they're the main love interest and you know they're going to win and then they add in shitty roadblocks where they're just like, oh yeah, this girl came in and she loves him and he might have feelings and oh, but he might pick her. But you're like, yeah, we know he's not going to pick her because... She's the winner. We know this from the very beginning. Why have that in there other than just padding out a story? But if you had alternative endings, then you would have this potential where you can grow both of them, have those endings, and then be like, oh, look, they actually developed more than one love interest and everyone wins because you get two different endings rather than kind of feeling bitter. And that's also a reason why a lot of authors don't develop the, the road bumps, as I like to call them, much because if you develop them too much you then get too attached to them and then you become more angry and bitter 
when they lose. And so I do think it is a good idea to at least consider alternative endings. It's that or he's just going to marry both Alia and her sister. Just saying. And while he's at it, he can marry the maid and his sister and why not have a big happy family? So many people are going to take me way too serious. But hey, you know what? It adds for good drama. Overall, I know I'm rambling a bit and my voice is starting to crackle and I've had to take a couple of takes through multiple redoings and also my cat wanting to go outside just to annoy me. It's just how I feel about the series. Again, you do not have to agree with me and I don't think any less of anyone that just doesn't like the series, but I will say blind hatred and saying, oh, this series shouldn't exist or this series shouldn't get as much hype. I hate that. And it's one of the reasons why I've always had a problem with the word overhyped. And there's, I'd kind of want to do another video on that because I feel like there's a lot more to talk about that I haven't talked about. But I just hate that whole idea of people just being more jealous of another series doing well because they don't like it so no one else is allowed to like it. That happens a lot on social media and especially on X slash Twitter where people get disgruntled because their favorite series isn't more popular than another series that they don't like and it's just pure jealousy. And it's just like, why do you care? Like, why do you generally care that something else is doing better than that? Just enjoy what you like. Oh, but it won't get another season. How do you know that? Go read the source material. And that's the thing. You don't have to watch the anime. You can watch, read the source material, and that's an option available. So there's a lot of things, I think, to digest. And I didn't even touch on everything. And that's just how crazy the situation is. But I'm super looking forward to reviewing Volume 5 of Alia Sometimes Has Her Feelings in Russian. So if you've got to the end of the video, leave a nice comment, leave an angry comment, tell me how bad I am, how I'm the personification of evil and diabolicalness and how I ramble too much and blah, 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 blah. And also Alia's sister has massive juggalogs. Her Mount Everest's are the best. She is best girl. Alia sucks. Thank you for watching the video. Check out my light novel reviews on Alia Sometimes Says Her Feelings in Russian and also other light novel reviews and analysis videos because I'm doing more. So again, if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I will see you beautiful nerds in the next video.